Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're going to get started in just a minute. While we're waiting, if you want to say hello in the chat box, let us know where you're joining us from. Again, hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are. We're saying hello in the chat box right now. Hello, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, as a reminder, your phone lines are muted. Uh, please feel free to interact and chat with each other in the chat box. Uh, but if you have a question for our speakers, please add those to the Q&A box so we're able to make sure that we can see those. Um, this, video, this webinar is being recorded and a, recording, a link to the recording will be made available on NSLA's website and sent to you. And with that, I'll things, hand things over to Aaron. Aaron. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Leslie, and welcome, everyone. Happy Summer Learning Week. We are really excited to be putting a spotlight on the great work so many people in our field are doing to support uh, students and families through programs and partnerships. And today, uh, we have a special uh, webinar on making called Making a Masterpiece, which is really about lifting up uh, the important role arts play in the education of all young people and that we're seeing in summer. And it's being presented and sponsored by the Mizzen app uh, by Mott or Mizzen by Mott and the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation, a huge leader uh, and, and supporter of our entire field. But this Mizzen app that they have is a huge resource for all of us and you're gonna be learning about it. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Leslie. So just quickly for anyone who's not familiar with uh, NSLA, we've been around for more than 25 years. And our goal is to make sure that every young person in America has access and can afford a high quality summer learning experience every single year of their lives and regardless of their zip code or their background. And we're working to use summer as a key strategy in combating summer learning loss, now COVID learning loss, and closing the opportunity and achievement gaps, which research shows grow most dramatically uh, over the summer months. Next slide. So I won't spend time on this, but we believe that uh, sadly, again, you know, summer is one of the most inequitable times in education, but it's also one of the most entrepreneurial and opportunistic times to, to help young people in all of education. And we think it's a time to help young people and staff improve so they get ready for the coming school year. It's a time to innovate, as we're seeing with our new uh, Summer Innovation Fellowship, uh, especially for leaders of color that we're running right now across the country with so many new ideas that are getting piloted and at scale. Uh, it's a time to break down the artificial silos in education and what we call time for integration and breaking down, you know, the, the walls between school districts and nonprofits and government agencies and even corporations and summer is a time we can bring all these folks together, as we'll hear about. And then finally, it's a real time of, you know, immediate and lasting impact, both at the national level, which we have partners here on today's call who are, are leading that charge at the community, city, state level, and then at a program and a, ultimately a personal level and, uh, and the folks, the, the programs that we're offering, people are learning skills and meeting mentors and getting life um, experiences that will stay with them now, but also help them into the future. Um, next slide. So I just want you to know about some resources. There'll be a lot of great resources uh, that you'll hear about on this webinar. But one that's new that we are uh, trying to lift up and could use your help in making sure people know about is called discoversummer.org. Uh, it has, it's a program search engine with almost 20,000 programs listed in it that you can find in your community, plus lots of other resources about finding meals, finding mentors, STEM activities, jobs, all these other partners have, have put their uh, resources onto this website, and we think it's really valuable and will grow in the future. It's called discoversummer.org. We're doing a big uh, campaign across the country to get raise awareness. Secretary Cardona, the head of the U.S. Department of Education, is announcing uh, doing a PSA on 800 radio stations this week. Um, Nintendo is sponsoring billboards. So we're trying to get the word out of this resource and make sure everyone can have a great summer this summer and future years to come. So with that, I would like to now introduce our moderator uh, for today's webinar, who's a friend, but a, a real leader and, and um, 
a supporter of all our work, Carrie Pardo from the Mott Foundation is gonna be uh, leading our, our, our activities. And I think before we get to Carrie, to set the mood, we actually have a great uh, presenter, Steph Reed, who runs uh, the Power of Love program and is, is teaching our young people arts and music and also social justice through his summer program. So Steph, I think was gonna set the tone with a, with a song for us first, and then we'll go to Carrie. Steph. Good morning, good morning folks, hope all is well. Uh, my name is Steph Reed and I'm gonna be sharing a song called The Power of Love, which I released back in 2017, July 2017, turned into a tour, turned into an album, and now here I am running the Power of Love project. It's turned from a single to an album, to a tour, to a curriculum, and now it's its own nonprofit organization. So here we are four years later and I'm gonna sing the song. Anniversary of the Power of Love with the Power of Love song, full circle to the Power of Love nonprofit organization. Great job. 
and also just speaks to the power of love, speaks to the power of arts and music to make an impact and engage all of us as we were just engaged by Steph. Uh, so with that now, I'm going to turn it over to my great friend, Carrie, and let Carrie uh, facilitate a conversation uh, with Steph and Rachel and others. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, but how do you follow that? Exactly, right? Uh, and I think you're so right, Aaron. Uh, the power of love, and it made me not only think of arts and all of that, but what we do day in and day out with after school and summer learning programs and what all of you are doing. Uh, so welcome everyone to the Make a Masterpiece session. Uh, we at Mott and the Mizzen team are excited to be a part of National Summer Learning Week and to have all of you join us today. Uh, as Erin mentioned, my name is Carrie Pardo, and I have the pleasure of working at the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation, where we believe in the power of high quality after school and summer learning opportunities for all youth. For the past 20 years, we have focused on providing support to after school programs by supporting a statewide after school network in all 50 states. The networks have worked to support policy for the field, helping to leverage the new funding from the American Rescue Plan, to engaging new partners such as businesses and higher education institutions and focus on quality and innovation to help the field and all of you provide high quality after school opportunities for all young people by engaging them in entrepreneurship, college and career ready activities, service and service learning, STEM, and of course, the arts. As we all continue to navigate these challenging times, after school and summer learning programs are more important than ever for young people, their families, and their communities. So today we are excited to take this opportunity to get creative and use our imagination to think of new and innovative ways to incorporate the arts into after school and summer learning programs. Now, I could sit here and tell you why the arts are important, but I think it'd be better to hear from the experts themselves. So to provide us with this information and inspire us, I would like to welcome back Steph Reed and introduce Robin Berlinski, Executive Director of Engaging Creating Creative Minds. Just like Steph, Robin wears multiple hats. In addition to her role with Engaging Creative Minds, she is also an adjunct professor at the College of Charleston School of Education, Health and Human Performance a leader in the local education community and a champion to all children. Steph and Robin, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it and are looking forward to learning from you both uh, and having a good dialogue conversation about arts and after school and summer learning. Thank you so much for having me and for having us. Absolutely. Uh, and for all of our uh, participants that are here, please feel free to put questions in the chat. Uh, if you have any for Robin and Steph as they are talking, uh, like if you want Steph to come on tour and uh, visit, uh, I'm just kidding, but please. No, 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 no. Yes. If you want to bring me on tour, <laughs> it's a great, great day. Yeah, but please go ahead and put questions in the chat and we'll do our best to respond. Um, but to get us started, um, and Robin, maybe I'll start with you is, can you share a little bit about your program and your organization to help everyone have some context um, about kind of where you're coming from a little bit? Absolutely, yes, thanks, Carrie. Um, Engaging Creative Minds is in its ninth year of operations. We were modeled after Big Thought in Dallas, Texas, so we have a great path ahead of us. I'm a former educator, so I have 30 years experience in the education world, both in a classroom and in the children's museum world, and then at the College of Charleston. So my life is in classrooms. And um, the best part of my job is seeing how the arts do make classrooms come alive. The kids dance to learn about the solar system or create skits in a theater group to learn more about the Civil War. And rather than memorizing a timeline, they actually have personal experiences and um, connections to the historical figures. And the, we just see so much positive engagement, attendance, and just the whole culture of a, of a school can shift tremendously through the arts. So my background is in um, the woohoo spirit, as we call it. In 2016, we were lucky enough to win the Excellence Award here at NSLA, and we wear that, that hat proudly. 
um, because the woohoo spirit should be alive. Every kid should enter a camp, an after school program, or a classroom feeling like they are the most important person, ready to perform at the highest level and challenge themselves and celebrate together. So ECM is all about bringing the arts into classrooms in partnerships with school districts and local artists, cultural organizations and STEM professionals. And I can't wait to share more about that um, during this webinar. So thank you, Carrie. Thanks, Robin. Appreciate your sharing your background. Uh, both professionally and personally, so it's really helpful. Steph, could you maybe share a little bit about your program uh, and what I know you're actually, both of you are running programs even today, so we appreciate you stepping out and joining us. I really appreciate that. I'm actually, I have my TAs are like texting me about like stuff regarding parents and students like I'm in, so I partner with um, Judson Memorial Church to do uh, um, a lot of the work that I'm doing with the Power of Love Project nonprofit. So, uh, yeah, the Judson Memorial Church is my fiscal sponsor. They like help me to like make it possible to give like tax deductible donations as well as give me space to do work. So I'm up in the main office and then downstairs in the community room, the summer program is happening right now. We have about 20 kids four teaching artists. And so I'm like juggling double double duty of being present here and like tending to parents, students, and teachers' needs. So um, the Power of Love Project was founded officially last year during, um, after like the, the murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. I was, um, I decided to do like mutual aid and like show up to frontline and like give folks water and like uh, food and PPE, masks, all these things to help make them sustainable, like their activism sustainable. The thought was, how do I deepen this and how do you make activism even more sustainable? And I was like, well, I got the idea that through education and 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 training like a, like like young activists so that by the time they're of age in 18, 19, 20, they're already in the mindset of like revolution. They're in the mindset of resistance. They're in the mindset of using their voice and 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 speaking what's on their minds, what's on their hearts to like to, and making them feel empowered to be able to contribute at a young age because we, you know, we we often look at like the Malcolm X's, we look at the Martin Luther King's, we look at these people, but like we don't look at like the Greta Thunbergs, like the children who have these ideas. And it's like the young generation always have, they're the ones who lead revolution. They're the ones who, who lead the charge. And it's like, you look at people like Fred Hampton, who was like a super, super young person that was like leading this, this these movements. And it's like, well, if we create a space for young people to like, create a space for people to young people to explore the different ways you can do it versus like like just talent just versus like school where like you're just kind of there's a a structure and it's like it doesn't change i was like what if we create something new where this possibility where you can explore different art forms and different ways and, and find your way through like how do you voice your opinion how do you like speak up for what you believe in and how do you like explore art while doing that and i think often people feel disempowered where it's like well i'm not an activist and I don't know where I fit in. I think a lot of young people identify creatively in so many ways. So it's like giving them music, giving them theater, giving them dance, giving them like sculpture making, giving them mural making is like ways to explore expression through the lens of social justice and like what matters to them as far as like whether it's climate change or LGBTQ rights or um, all these different things, it's like, it gives them, it makes them, it gives them a voice where they feel voiceless, where they're told to like be seen and not heard. You're, you're here, you're leading this program. It's about you. What do you believe in? What are you for? What do you want? What change do you want to see in the world? And now you get the chance to like explore that and create it. And that's what we're doing here at Freedom Summer. And I'm super excited. And it's, it's a, it's a startup and it's a, a pilot program. I'm looking to turn this into an actual school. Um, but we're starting with one week in July, one week in August, and continuing to raise funds so that we can sustain this work. And that's what we're doing. No, appreciate that stuff. And I love how you talked about arts and you shared all different types of arts, right? It's, it is not just about music, but it is murals or potter. I mean, it could be everything to dance, etc. cetera. Um, so I, I think that that's a really great segue into this next question that I have for you both is uh, wanting to know why are the arts important? Um, so Steph, you talked about it from a social justice aspect, uh, but Robin, I want to kind of bring you in and, you know, when you're talking to people, when you're trying to get, even if it's young people themselves or parents or partners, 
what, what do you say to them about why arts are important in after school and summer learning? I think my um, favorite phrase on that question is the arts are all about creativity and innovation and design. Um, I, I believe that, uh, you know, a lot of historically, at least in my world, they had to explain a lot at the beginning um, that it wasn't about glitter and glue. It was about design and innovation and that problem solving really does happen through the arts. And that's been a conversation I've been having for a very long time. And something that has recently helped me tremendously is um, a Gallup, Gallup research that we did in our state. Um, they looked at South Carolina arts rich schools and found that there is a very strong link between arts rich learning and student hope and engagement. And what better time than now to have more hope and engagement. And so we, that's what we share. The arts create opportunities for students to come out of their shell, to try new things, to problem solve, collaborate, communicate. And so I, you know, I could go on and on about the ways the arts bring learning alive. And we all know that some of our most memorable um, experiences are the ones that we dove in, we were motivated, we were challenged, there was some level of excitement, we had relationships with either the facilitators or our team, and so we really thrive on the innovation, design, and creativity when we speak of the arts. I love that, uh, right? I mean, those are those 21st century skills uh, right, that we all know we need, but we know young people need those things, uh, right? And arts can definitely, definitely help with that. Um, before I turn it over to Steph to, to share a little bit too about what he, he believes why arts are so important. And I think, and you talked about that stuff, but Robin, um, in South Carolina, you guys are paving the way right now for arts and after school and summer learning uh, and want to share this amazing news. And I, I want it to also, with the caveat of we understand that everyone can be South Carolina uh, at this moment, but it's something that we can all aspire to. So if you would mind sharing. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to share. So we are very lucky that our state superintendent of education, Molly Spearman, is a former music teacher. She gets it. And there's nothing better than having the leader believing what you do. Um, so um, let's see, it was June 29th, I remember the day, we uh, received, or we had a press conference to announce that the South Carolina Department of Education is awarding the South Carolina Arts Commission $20 million from the ARP ESSER funding. I know, let, let's pause for a minute and we'll yeah, do that. 20, 20 million. It's a three-year project and Engaging Creative Minds is part of that along with the Arts in Basic Curriculum, ABC project at Winthrop and the South Carolina Governor's School for Arts and Humanity. And so together these three organizations over the next three years will spearhead more arts in more schools, both in the school day and in the out of, out of school time spaces. Um, through professional development and um, partnerships with artists and organizations. And really the biggest thing about this is that it is sustainable because what we do is um, empower and provide that on-site professional development where teachers participate as learners alongside their students to dance to learn about the solar system and new ways to engage their students in future classrooms. And that will just, um, you know, snowball into amazing success for our state. So thank you, Carrie, for giving me the platform to shout that out. But uh, $20 million for arts in the state of South Carolina, and we will keep you all updated. Yeah, I, I wish we could have um, had a screenshot of Steph's face when you said $20 million. Because uh, I it, saw it, <laughs> I saw it, Steph, and I love it. it. It was, it was exactly what I think probably everyone on this call is thinking, and that's such a huge step forward, right? Um, and again, sets that bar high, um, but also realizing that you know 
many people on this phone are not from South Carolina and on this call, right? And so uh, we can have that bar high, but I think then also realizing that, you know, it started out, like you said, Robin, you've been doing this for nine years, right? And, and you're building it and stuff. You're, you're starting, you're in year one and, and building this. Um, and so I think, Steph, you talked already a little bit about, right, how you see it connecting to activism, um, but want to actually then dive a little bit more into where Robin was heading about those skill sets. Um, so how do you how do you see arts and what you're doing this weekend in August uh, for your camp um, really helping to connect with other skill sets that young people need, but also with other subject areas such as STEM, writing, social emotional learning, right? Those things that Robin was starting to kind of dive into. That's a great question. Um, I think for starters, we acknowledging the fact that we've been in quarantine for a year and a half. And like, aside from maybe summer rising, which I'm as a, I'm a DO, department of education substitute teacher. So like I work in the DOE and I know what that system is and I don't want to be too critical of that, but I will say that this is a very intimate space and it's a way for young people to acclimate to being with each other. Like, so there's like a huge social emotional element of like how to be with other people after being apart from society for over, for like a year and a half. There's, that's one. Two, it's opportunity to give people voice, like where they feel comfortable speaking up about the things, about their opinions and their thoughts and their feelings. Um, it's an opportunity for them to like think differently. I, I think the idea of Robin said like problem solving, it's like the young people here in, in, in Freedom Summer, they're like, they're, they're all given like similar prompts, right? But then it's like, how do you see this? And it's like, there's so much possibility that is then created of out the box thinking and different perspectives that comes from like, the opportunity to have have a voice, to use that voice to like look at different angles of what this could mean for you and what's your interpretation of this. And you find these different, and I think finding these different solutions. Then there's like um, opportunity to like language, right? Like really, what do you, what's on your heart? What's on your mind? Like, and exploring those thoughts and feelings on paper and like sharing it with people and then collaborated like collaboration like working together and like taking autonomy over these projects and like there's a lot of these skills and I, I think sometimes if you only look through things through the lens of common core and stem and some of these things it can just for myself it feels like it's limiting and like what is possible in the world and validation of the experience of being in a room, making art with people, questioning the world around you, questioning these these constructs and like how you feel about yourself, where you are in relation to your family, to your peers, and like so much groundbreaking things happen there that's like very dynamic, very, very dynamic and an opportunity for them to like really explore things that in any other setting, it wouldn't really be possible in like a math class or an English class or a gym class or a science class. And I think they'll be able to show up more as whole people when they go into these other classes where it's more, it's more, uh, I want to, I don't want to say specific, but when this is how, this is what you're being told what to learn and this is the information and memorize it test for it and that's it like we're we're giving you opportunity to have critical thought like and i think that above all is like the point of education is like critical thinking so to me i think the highest one of the highest things aside from the social emotional stuff is like encouraging and empowering young people to have voice and to critically think yeah which definitely plays right into every aspect of education um right and that's what we want is for young people to be able to step up and to think and and to problem solve, uh, right? And arts can do that. Um, you're gonna, you are gonna learn so much from that. Um, Robin, I'm gonna turn back to you here. Uh, you know, one of the things I think this year, especially in the last year and a half, I should say that we have heard over and over again is partnerships. Um, is that we can't do this alone. A lot of times, I think pre-COVID, right? We, we stayed in our lane and we, and we were focused on making sure our program was 
moving forward and, and working to support our kids. And now it's the doors have opened. And we realize that the more people we bring into the fold, that we can do so much more uh, to help our young people. Uh, so just wanna know a little bit from you about what new partnerships, obviously partnerships with the Department of Ed, but other partnerships have you seen emerge in South Carolina that are really helping to benefit your program and the kids that you are working with? Yeah, um, so what we're seeing is um, schools are, are tired. Administrators are tired teachers are tired and students are tired and they have been champions. I mean, look at what they have overcome. I mean, they are rock stars, all of them. And then we find ourselves at the beginning of summer a few weeks ago and um, ECM was challenged with finding staff. Who is going to work and who's gonna come? I mean, are the kids gonna come? Are the teachers gonna come? Um, and so, we go back to what our core is. And at ECM, our core is fun. We woohoo our way through everything we do. And we start with bubbles. Bubbles have become our signature piece. And kids come when they see bubbles. Parents smile when they see bubbles. And teachers get excited when there are bubbles. And so our partnerships this summer we're really focused on how can we create new energy so teachers can come into quote work feeling energized because the theater group is coming in to teach with new energy. They've been dormant for a year. They are so ready to come out and work with kids. So for us, partnerships this summer especially are about energy. New energy coming in to work with amazing people who are tired, but want to continue to engage with children. And it has been a phenomenal success. We are in week three right now, just like Steph, we're out there in 11 locations, elementary through middle, just having fun through the arts. And we have almost a perfect attendance. Our teachers are showing up every day. Our students were getting higher attendance. Each week, new students wanna come. So that says a lot because, again, when you go back to where they are and how they feel after a year of really challenging um, situations, they're showing up. The fun is what gets them there and the energy keeps them coming back. And then the arts come in and teach. And what I want to say, Steph, I loved, I wrote this down, show up as a whole person. We want them to show up. And even if they're deflated, and feeling really low and confused and scared, well, that's their whole person. Come on in, because we're gonna woohoo you and bubble you and have fun with you and engage with you through the arts. And you are going to leave a different whole person, but fully motivated and inspired. And what a great way to start the school year. So for South Carolina, especially, our partnerships are energizing and getting everyone ready for the new school year through the arts. Love that. Thank you, Robin. Uh, that And I feel motivated, right? I feel that energy coming through. Uh, so I can only imagine what the students are feeling. Um, Steph, to kind of wrap us up, since you are new, right? Newer into this after school space, really, uh, of getting going. Uh, what is a new partnership or one or two examples of new partnerships that you have seen emerge in this past year? Well, I, for one, I think for me, I've, so I've been working as a teaching artist for like 15 years, you know, working with multiple community-based organizations, nonprofit organizations, and I've learned a lot, right, about like how things work well and how things work not so well and what I want to see in the world and what I don't want to see in the world. And I think as my first year as a director uh, and being leading the charge, right, and like creating the culture, it's like, things like my partnership with Judson Memorial Church, it's like, it makes, like you realize capitalism has this believing, this whole idea of like survive or die, winner takes all and like individual individuality and no, no sense of like this whole and this community and the sense of us. And it's like, when I think about partnership, I think about us 
and it's like what is your what are your goals like how do we make this like a win-win for like the idea of a win-win not win lose but win-win so it's like what are just some of judson's goals what are some of these other partnerships like what are you want, are trying to accomplish what am i trying to accomplish well maybe we can accomplish this together and it's like the sense of we can all win together and then what are the what are the what is the community trying to accomplish because the partnership is also with the parents and like partnership with the schools that i've done outreach to to, to recruit right and it's like we have we don't have any like major funding at this point it's, it's like our funding comes from people families friends people that i know you know what i mean and that's a partnership of like we are doing this work i have a vision people want to partner and help make that happen and by funding it and then by finding parents that are looking for meaningful programs for their for their for their kids to be in there's a partnership of i'm trusting you with my there's people that's donating they're trusting and like we're partnering and there's a trust over the money there's a partnership and trust over students and like what's going to happen there's a trust and partnership with teaching artists and like that they're going to be in a space where they feel heard safe and supported and then judson of like we want to we our, our mission is to serve this community and to be a space a safe space and a refuge for the community and like trusting that we are going to stay in alignment with that larger message so i think for me partnership isn't specific to a, necessarily a brand or a corporation or to a funder it's like it's kind of all around everything's like yeah. these different partnerships so for me it's like really getting dialed in on that all the <laughs> partnerships have to work in order for this thing to happen and for the arts to take place and for the students to receive the arts it's like there's so many people that have to enroll into the vision and be on board to say yes i want to be part of this yes i want to see that happen and i believe in it and so yeah for me it's just the idea of partnership being not limited to corporate it's everything on partnership yeah i love that right i mean it really is all layers right it's partnerships with the young people themselves right robin what you were saying too right is that they're in attendance and they're showing up but it's it's everyone from the young people all the way up and and out right and looking at how do we make those all work in order to keep supporting kids it takes a village it does it say it really does so well, I want to thank you both so much, Steph and Robin, for joining us today. Uh, what you both shared is insightful, but inspiring about the potential and opportunity when infusing arts and after school and summer learning. Uh, and I don't know about all of you on this uh, webinar, but I can feel your passion and excitement. Um, and so I really, truly uh, feel feel that uh, and know that I will take that with me. So thank you both so much. Appreciate you. Uh, and so for those of you on, on the call, you might be saying, well, this is great. You know, Steph is a musician and Robin has been doing this now for nine years. Um, how do I begin to do this? Or how do I do this? Maybe I want to ramp up kind of what we've been doing with arts. Uh, and so I have a resource that I want to lift up that Aaron mentioned at the beginning of the call, which is Mizen by Mott. If you are new to Mizen, this web and mobile app offers curated quality content for after school and summer learning professionals and is free. Yes, I said that keyword free uh, with support from the Mott Foundation. So our next speaker not only works at one of the 50 state after school networks that I mentioned earlier, but has also been developing content for Mizen since its inception. Rachel Kessler is a learning design coordinator with Oregon Ask, and as an educator who is also a professional artist, uh, so I know she is loving uh, the first half of this webinar for sure. She is passionate about arts programming and after school setting, and I can't think of a more perfect person to lead us in this next activity. So Rachel. Thanks so much, Carrie, and thank you so much for Robin and Steph. I'm fully inspired. You're speaking my language. I'm really excited to think about kids being really engaged this summer and really having an opportunity to um, to feel that agency that we've been talking about. And it's such a great opportunity for us as as facilitators and folks that get to work with kids um, to think about their agency as well as our own. How are we working as a community to really think about um, the power of our own voices and our own um, desires and our vision? 
And those of you who are joining uh, this call, um, I'm so glad Carrie introduced me because I'm just gonna jump right into what I'm excited about and forget to, to give all the background. But <laughs> for those of you who are joining this call, I feel like many of you probably are um, beginning arts programming or just thinking about, hey, how do I get a scaffolding? How do I start? What are those pieces that I need so that I can really um, get creative with, for the youth in my community and help them develop that voice that they need? How do I help kids with a process-based um, set of activities or set of ideas that are gonna give them those tools so that they can run with it? And you yourself as a facilitator or a director can feel comfortable that, um, that they're doing that in a safe space, that they have what they need to go ahead and, and get excited about their summer with you and their future in general. So what I've brought today is a really short activity. We only have a short time together. And so what I am bringing is a, a little piece of a much uh, longer potential set of activities from the Mizzen by Mott app. So the app has a whole bunch of activities in it. It's also got tips and PD to kind of help you get set up to engage kids in this awesome learning and experience. But this particular activity is from a set of activities called uh, Making Comics. And Making Comics is something that sounds like it's supposed to end up uh, this perfect artwork that we can envision beforehand. But I'm gonna ask you today to think about this as a brainstorming opportunity. So we're not, we're gonna make some art together and we're going to do this just with a pencil or pen or what you've got hanging around and some paper, scratch paper. I don't want you to think about there being a perfect end result. Instead, I want to imagine together what we can accomplish uh, when we're, we're just brainstorming and deciding, hey, I wanna, I wanna create a world. You as facilitators are creating a world for the kids that you're working with so that they can create their own. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is just the, the intro activity. And so if you can find a pencil or a piece of paper, and um, I'm so appreciative of Steph because Steph, I can see your face. And so I know that you're, um, you're here with me and I know that everybody else on the call is also engaged, but I'm, um, I'm really excited to be able to see your faces if you wanna share and, um, <laughs> and we can all work on this together. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pencil. Oh, look at all my friends and community. So um, grab a, a pencil and a paper and we'll get started. So the very beginning of this activity is going to be us thinking about a kid. So we're gonna develop a character and this activity is called character and setting. It sounds simple, it's gonna be cool. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to think about that kid that we're working with this summer. What kind of experiences do we want them to have? What are they like? Now we're gonna draw this guys. We're gonna draw a character. It doesn't need to be uh, a super elaborate drawing. The idea is we're gonna start somewhere and that can be a stick figure. It can be a set of shapes, but we're gonna start by developing and manifesting this kid. This is our character. So on your scrap paper, I want you to give it a shot. Go ahead and manifest that character. Who's that kid? Now we're just gonna take a very short time to do this. And what's great about these, the activities that I'm pulling from, uh, from Mizzen is that you can modify them. So you can make this go on. This could be an all day project. This could be a week long project. And when you do all of these activities together, they can go all the way to a full comic book. But for now, who's this kid? And we have some suggestion for ourselves on paper. There's a kid, I'm manifesting them in my mind. So. Now, what do we wanna bring? What tools do we wanna bring to this kid? We want to give this kid an opportunity to experience the arts. And we know by listening to our great panel 
and um, in our from our own experience that arts can be music, they can be uh, painting, they can be drawing, they can be um, drama. So what kind of tools are we hoping to bring to this kid this summer? Remember exactly what it is that you want to offer this kid. Our panel was helpful too in describing agency, inspiration, fun. So now on paper, we have a kid and we're giving them the tools that they need to have some fun this summer. These tools might come in the form of say a paintbrush or a radio or who knows, who knows what you wanna offer. They may also um, include costumes. They might also include ways for them to, to really get excited about their role in what's happening. So go ahead and give your kid everything that they need. And we're gonna move on to the next fun part. We've got our kid, they're ready to participate in what we're gonna offer them this summer. So now let's think about what kind of space we're creating, what kind of world we're creating for this kid. Now they might, with all the agency you're providing them, they might be able to fly through a city. Maybe the world that you're creating for them is a space that they can navigate in that way. I want you to think about developing a world. Is it outdoors? Is it with a group of friends? Where does your imagination take you when you think, I'm gonna develop a world for this kid to develop their own in? What kind of powers are you giving them? So take a minute, see if you can develop a setting for your character and just brainstorm it on paper. If you don't feel like drawing a whole setting, write down what you're thinking. What kind of world do you want to create? And so I hope you're thinking about all the fun ways that you can create a space that's going to invite the kids that you're working with into the fun and agency that Robin and Steph described to us so well. How are they going to be offered the opportunity to grow and to do it in a way that's safe and fun for them? As a, as a person that does training for facilitators, usually in my role, I like to bring tools and agency to the adults that I'm working with so that they can turn around and do the same for their youth. What I'm hoping to offer you today in this super quick activity, I've asked you to brainstorm this with me in under five minutes. So you can imagine what this would be like if you were actually able to extend it and take some time. Um, but what, how you feel and the imagination and agency that you feel yourself is exactly what you're gonna to bring to the kids that you work with. The more imaginative you're able to feel, the more imaginative your kids will be able to feel. The more that you are willing to recognize that you build the world that you exist in, the more the kids you work with will realize that themselves, that the world that they live in is partly their creation and what they bring to it is what it will be for everyone. So when we're thinking about doing the arts and when we're thinking about bringing imagination and um, relevance to what it is that we're doing, the more the kids that we work with will truly feel engaged and the more that they will want to share their vision and the more they will want to participate and come back every day and the more that they will have the tools that they need to engage in whatever part of their lives they're presented with in the moment. So as facilitators, I wanted to make sure to bring you some tools 
which through the MISEN app you can find. These are activities that you can um, that you can use that will offer you structure, tell you what you need, give you timing to materials lists. And what I would like to bring you today and feel I have the opportunity to bring you is hopefully the inspiration to know that even if you've never done arts programming before, even if this is brand new to you, you can use tools like these to work with your kids to develop your imagination and the world that you want to bring them, as well as uh, the world that you're creating for yourself. And this is all new for all of us. It's an exciting opportunity this summer to be open, to be excited, and to, to apply all of the amazing imagination that we bring to our lives every day. So uh, I know that was very quick. Thank you all for being so patient and going through that um, kind of marathon. Yeah, and if you want to share your inspired work, then I love that so much. Thank you all, yeah, cool. And take this with you, you can build on it. And if you check out the app, then you will see that this, uh, you can follow, <laughs> you can follow these short activities all the way to the fruition of making a whole comic book and really building a whole world. So go for it and have fun. Rachel, um, big thank you. I think you saw Steph cheering you on um, at the end. So appreciative of you giving us a little taste, right, of what is on MISM, but also I think reminding all of us, sometimes we think uh, when we're trying to figure out what to do in programming that it has to be so complicated. Um, and this can take us back, right, and make things easy. And then, as you said, Rachel, build on it, right, and create an entire comic. Um, and um, you know, I'm sure all of you are better drawers than me. I wish you could really see this because it's, uh, but I tried, I tried and that's what matters. Um, so thank you, Rachel, so much um, for this activity in your role and ongoing role in helping to support Mizen um, to provide this engaging high quality content for after school and summer learning programs. So we just really appreciate you. Um, I want to take this opportunity to lift up a couple of other resources uh, about thinking when you're trying to say, how again am I incorporating arts? Uh, Rachel gave us a great example, right, with drawing and comics. But as Steph mentioned, there's so much more to arts. Uh, so one thing that you can do is join us for Mizzen by Mott, a summer lawn series. The next events are Sunday, July 25th and Sunday, August 8th at 3.30 Eastern. This series will feature performances by jazz greats, introduce super fun jazz dances, and share a unique one-of-a-kind curriculum that is in Mizzen, developed by Jazz at Lincoln Center and Foundations Inc. that melds music and math. All are welcome to join to bring family and friends and host a watch party. Second is that there is an NSLA playlist that has been created by the 2020 Summer Learning Awardees that is on Mizzen that you can find that has curated a playlist of different activities that they uh, recommend that you use. So that's another way. And the last piece to lift up is that earlier in this discussion with Steph and Robin, they talked about how arts can integrate into STEM and other subjects and want to lift up that Mizzen also has great activities and resources in STEM, entrepreneurship, social and emotional learning, which we talked about, and so much more. So I know we are getting close to time, but want to finish up with uh, kind of a bookend. We heard from Steph at the beginning, um, and now want to have a chance to hear from young people themselves. In October last year, a program called Jacksonville Arts and Music School, known as JAMS After School Program in Florida, expressed their, expressed their appreciation for after school the best way they know how, through music. Young people wrote, created the beat, directed and edited the video with a crew of students working on lighting and sound. So without further ado, please enjoy this video. When the lights come 
mind creativity sparks. The mind becomes a vessel of work that generates questions and thoughts. In every student's journey lies a time when path is unknown. Gifts are yet to be wrapped. And purpose is a goal too hard to find. After school, after standards, after tests, young students are allowed the room and opportunity to become young artists. Instances of hope and glimpses of meaning become the center of community, peace, leadership, and greatness. Outstanding the test of time. These moments of joy are embroidered with symbols pointing toward what happens when the lights come on. There is a distinct time when butterflies break out of their cocoon and are given their wings to take flight. There is a time when gravity becomes a non-factor. When you can stand before your peers and leaders and float above ground using the tools they have helped you shape. It's a power unlike one has ever seen. It's a power not many get the chance to know. Because when the lights are off, so are the minds that need to believe there is no gravity. I need, we need expression in its greatest forms. It has never been more necessary that our voices speak volumes, that our feet dance atop mountains, and our hands craft life and build reality. We possess the power to step into galaxies, whole worlds. We own this power when the lights come on. I have the right to stand before you and be authentically me. Not afraid of boundaries. I know I'm limitless, timeless, extraordinary, because I'm given the opportunity to be. I'm aware that when I create, I make moments unknown. When my pen creates, I open the doors for the next young girl or boy who needs to see that illumination. They need that time to shine, whether it be now or in a few moments in time. I have the meaning, maturity, and memory to be great, to be historical like the ones that came before me. I know it's my time, because I make history whenever I step into my destiny. When the lights come on, it's time we believe in who we were meant to be. Focus on the things we want to achieve. I know my creative potential is endless. And this family, this community sees a queen in me. I know that we have the power to be more than what the eye can see. It's empowerment, perseverance, resistance, resilience, protest, projection, progress, and intelligence. All. Oh. The lights come on. Thank you uh, for playing that, Leslie. Um, and I hope you all enjoyed that. I know every time I watch that video, I leave uh, the screen with goosebumps uh, and inspiration about what after school means to these young people, but also the impact that all of you are having. So um, we hope that you enjoyed this today and that you feel inspired and left with some resources. Remember to download Mizzen uh, and find some amazing activities on that. Thank you to Robin, Steph, and Rachel uh, today for helping us. And congratulations to Aaron, you and your team uh, at NSLA for a wonderful, amazing uh, National Summer Learning Week. So Aaron. Thank, thank you, Carrie. Thank you, everyone. I just want to, we're going to wrap up. I just want to echo. I love that we started with music uh, from, uh, from Steph. We ended with music from our, uh, our students and in Florida, we had an art design, you know, our, our art project from Rachel in Oregon. So we just covered the whole country in South Carolina, you know, we were in New York and Carrie's in Michigan. So this is something that's a real national movement, a national priority. Uh, and we're so proud to work with all of you. So a couple quick things just to know as we wrap up, we've also created as part of Summer Learning Week, a family resource guide. We hope you'll download it and share it with your uh, folks. Got lots of great uh, opportunities and resources in it. So here it is, and, and we can make sure you get it. And also just a few things coming up that we want people to know. Uh, first of all, we have prizes that we're going to be giving out for anyone who, who comes onto our, our webinar. So 
uh, encourage people, I hope you'll join us tomorrow. Uh, we'll start with uh, tomorrow. We are having a great session about how we use summer uh, to celebrate future leaders and career paths. And you're gonna be hearing from John Fort, who's a business reporter from CNBC and others from NIH and College to Congress, and even a uh, partnership after school education, all running programs to help uh, diversify who works in these different careers uh, using summer programs. Also, if we go back one slide, Leslie, I'll just share. Uh, our national conference is gonna be open and running and we're back to doing it. It's gonna be in Washington, DC, November 8th through 10th. I hope all the folks who are on this call will join us there. It's probably gonna be our biggest and largest and most important conference we've ever had. Uh, and we expect great leaders and great sessions. So we hope you'll come. There's an early bird sign up registration rate. If you sign up now, bring your folks. So you can find that on our website, summerlearning.org, national conference. And just to know that we also have a whole arts professional learning community uh, that we'd love all of you to be part of. That'll meet quarterly and we'll meet at the conference. Uh, and we have consulting available uh, to help people. These are title of our book of the training is called Summer Starts in September. And so as we get through this summer, the federal funding that's coming down to programs and states and cities is uh, for the next three years. So we have a lot of opportunity to keep growing our programs, improving our programs and making a bigger impact. Arts is critical to everything we do, uh, but none of us can do it alone and we do it together. And we're very honored at NSLA to be a convener of so many wonderful people who are putting kids first. Thank you for joining us. Happy Summer Learning Week. Keep up the great work and we'll be in touch soon. Hope you join us tomorrow, one o'clock Eastern time uh, again. Thanks everybody.